let's not forget how we all felt about this dude prior to his reign. And then, of course, there's Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. And in doing so, let's revisit Seth Meyers ripping him to shreds. According to Gawker, Trump's legendary hairdo is actually a weave. Remember the media's obsession with his hair? Donald Trump often appears on Fox, which is ironic because a fox often appears on Donald Trump's head. <laughs> if you're at the Washington Post table with Trump and you can't finish your entree, don't worry, the fox will eat it. Myers didn't let it slide. A talk radio station out of Albany, quote, I have a great relationship with the blacks. I've always had a great relationship with the blacks. The man who follows a white supremacist playbook really said this. Donald Trump said recently he has a great relationship with the blacks, though unless the blacks are a family of white people, I bet he's mistaken. <laughs> which Myers rightfully called out. It was him going down and one by one looking us over like we were pieces of meat and he was trying to decide which you know piece of meat he wanted. And I was hoping you know that would be the end, that I wouldn't have to deal with him anymore. And so then on finals night, when I'm sitting in hair and makeup, getting ready in just my robe, and he comes walking backstage, and I'm so startled, like, what? What are you doing back here? We're a bunch of women getting ready for a beauty pageant that we've been working towards, you know, Miss right, USA. A yeah, exactly. Like, why are you back here? And then I saw him walk into the dressing room just like he has bragged about on Howard Stern and the audio is out there. Horrendous stuff that we learned. Also, a recruiting visit per Myers. Donald Trump owns the Miss USA pageant, which is great for Republicans because it will streamline their search for a vice president. <laughs> Macy said it's dropping Trump's menswear collection following derogatory comments he made about Mexican immigrants. The retailer released a statement saying, quote, Macy's is a company that stands for diversity and inclusion. We have no tolerance for discrimination in any form. In light of statements made by Donald Trump, which are inconsistent with Macy's values, we've decided to discontinue our business relationship with Mr. Trump. On this topic. I like that Trump is filthy rich, but nobody told his accent. His whole life is models and gold leaf and marble columns, but he still sounds like a know-it-all down at the OTB. <laughs> Mr. Trump may not be a good choice for president, but he would definitely make a great press secretary. How much fun would that be? Kim Jong-il is a loser. His latest rally was a flop. I feel bad for Ahmadinejad. He, he never man wears a windbreaker. He has no class. I, on the other hand, sell my own line of ties. You can find them at Macy's in the flammable section. Myers pokes fun as well. I was at the really? last night and some guy came up to me and said, I saw you on Fox and Friends this morning. Is Gretchen as cute in person as she is on TV? And what did you oh, answer, America? Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous. You gorgeous. Look at her today. Beautiful dress. You look wonderful. Gretchen, How are you? you look wonderful. Gretchen, very, very beautiful dress. Though. Great color. Right. In summary, Gretchen's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. You look beautiful. Well, you Thank look you. fabulous, too. Thank Brian, can you tell Gretchen she is definitely winning today? <laughs> she looks amazing. Winning. Who could forget the toxic culture at Fox News? There are actually some unscheduled parties happening tonight. I've been asked to give everyone a rundown. Fox News is having a party. Security is tough, so make sure you Bring your driver's license and your long form driver's license. But if you're blonde, don't worry about it. Just bring that dynamite smile. Myers can't. Andrew Breitbart, who passed in 2012, launched a website filled with misinformation and smear campaigns. Along with James O'Keefe, a man who just so badly wants to be a Broadway star because he's not good enough to do it, well, he produced music videos like this for Project Veritas. Andrew Breitbart's after party is going to be crazy. I mean, it won't be good, but it'll be crazy. <laughs> Side note, I actually met James O'Keefe last night. At least I think it was James O'Keefe. It may have just been a regular pimp who hated organized labor. But it wasn't just Republicans who heard it from Myers. The former President Barack Obama, he wasn't immune either. Now you, on the other hand, Mr. President, have aged a little. What happened to you? When you were sworn in, you looked like the guy from the Old Spice commercials. Now you look like Louis Gossett Sr. 
I've never said this to anyone before, but maybe you should start smoking again. <laughs> Is this the change you were talking about? <laughs> Mr. President, look at your hair. If your hair gets any whiter, the Tea Party is going to endorse it. Along with the biases of mainstream media outlets. I, of course, am contractually obligated to attend the MSNBC party tonight. Everyone knows how the MSNBC party works. President Obama makes the Kool-Aid and everyone there drinks it. <laughs> Too close to my home. A few of my other favorites, Myers is lying on the senator from Utah. Mitt Romney wrote a book titled No Apologies. No Apologies? When you have to proclaim no apologies, isn't that a tacit admission you've made a lot of mistakes? If I come home from a trip to Vegas and the first thing I say to my girlfriend is no apologies, we're gonna have a follow-up conversation. All over America, I hear young people say, would you tell me what you're gonna do? Would you give me free college? Will you make sure that I can have medical marijuana? You know what I think we ought to tell young people? We aren't gonna give you anything. We're gonna give you the opportunity to get off your butt and go serve your country and secure your freedom because if you don't, nobody else is. And on this dope, Mike Huckabee. Mike Huckabee is considering Iran. Mike Huckabee said the president was raised in Kenya, went to a Muslim school, and he hates America. But despite that, he still seems like a sweet person. So he sounds less like a presidential candidate and more like my aunt. <laughs> Well done. Lastly, a parting shot. And who knows if they can beat you in 2012. But I tell you who could definitely beat you, Mr. President. 2008 Barack Obama. You would have loved him. So charismatic, so charming. Was he a little too idealistic? Maybe. But you would have loved him. So there's a lot here, of course, but first things first, if you can, please do become a channel member at youtube.com slash TYT Sports. Click the join button. We would greatly appreciate your support there and or go to tyt.com slash join. In addition, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. There is a lot to take away here. The first is some are saying that this led to Donald Trump pursuing the White House. Could be true. What we have seen over the years is the effects of of Myers' jokes to his face has led to the man showing how egotistically frail one can be when they have quite literally everything in the world. The vendettas that he has gone out against after reaching power, smear campaign after smear campaign, dishonesty, peddling in the big H's talking points, and much more. He has gone after Rosie O'Donnell. He has gone after cable news. He has gone after comedians that went against him. He has gone after the NFL because Pete Rizal, if you want to see it, check it out on the man. We did a deep dive on this. Uh, kudos to Jeff Perlman, who wrote a book on the USFL. Pete Rizal, the former NFL commissioner, said that he would never allow Donald Trump to be an owner of an NFL team, had a vendetta against them. And if you notice, the White House Correspondents' Dinner has not seen Donald Trump because he cannot take the heat. He does not like being perceived as a loser, one of his favorite words. So he sits them out when a real man would likely be there. A real man would take it, and he cannot because as I stated, he is egotistically frail. There are a few other things that jump out to me. The first is him going after MSNBC when he is an employee of NBC is shocking because when we have gone through other comedians that have gone up on that stage, they have chosen to not go after their employers or it has been a light joke. And they have also cited their employment. Whereas Seth Meyers kind of kept it real there that Barack Obama makes the drink and MSNBC drinks it. And the last part is this, and I think most important, Barack Obama ran on this progressive style campaign and Seth Meyers held up a mirror to say you wouldn't even you would like this guy but you probably don't even recognize him that's you from 2008 and that was startling because rarely especially at gigs like this will you see something like that it is rather partisan isn't it so that was one of my favorite moments This is Carolina Panthers owner David Tepper, a billionaire, 
confronting staff at a restaurant. So what drew his attention? Why was he so adamant of popping in? This was the sign that caught Tepper's attention. It reads, please let coach and GM pick this year. A direct reference to Tepper's reported influence on his franchise, picking Bryce Young over CJ Stroud. Per the outlet, Tepper walked in and asked, who was the person responsible for the message? We would learn it was the owner, Matt Wolforth. Wolforth would hilariously say, I do need him to be more of an owner and less of a coach or a GM. The Charlotte Observer has more. Wolforth said that he put the sign up earlier this week, Monday or Tuesday, and has been a Charlotte resident for decades, including being a personal seat license slash season ticket holder since the franchise began in 1995. The reason for this level of disdain at Tepper is because the Panthers have missed the playoffs every season since he bought the team in 2018. Carolina has compiled a 31-68 and record in that time frame and has gone through three head coaches in the last three years. Tepper's reputation, also not awesome. He was fined $300,000, chump change to him as a billionaire, in January for, quote, unacceptable conduct. After a video appeared to show him throwing a drink into the crowd during the Panthers' road loss against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Panthers Governor David Tepper is in hot water for a cold drink. As his team clinched the worst record in the National Football League, Tepper... 66 years of age, threw a drink at fans. Shannon Sharpe and Chad Ochocinco spoke on it. Roger Goodell got to come down hard. I'm talking about hard. Hard. Yeah. I'm talking about yeah. probably somewhere between a half a million and a million dollar fine, and he's got to be suspended for a period of time. I like I like the fine. I like I like the fine because we get fined for every little thing. The suspension. That's an owner. Is that, is, that, no. is that a little too much? I, I like the fine, though. The fine and the Ocho. And apology Ocho, that, to the that's fans. That's not a player. Itself. That's an owner. So now here's the thing. This dude has a history with these signs. Let me tell you about it. Following the 2023 season and the Panthers finishing an abysmal 2-15, and one of his signs would read, Meddling owners never win. Run from Jerry Jones. Yahoo Sports would add, and he was sort of ticked about that one. Why? Well, he's a meddling owner. Brilliant one-liners from the restaurant owner. More from Wolfarth. He'd clarify that it is nice. Tepper wants to win, but he'd say, you got to stay in your lane. This is not really an attack on anyone or anything. This is me expressing frustration because, believe it or not, I actually lose more of my income when the Panthers lose than he does. That's true. Maybe Wolfarth should reread a New York Magazine profile on David Tepper. And it's because if there are people who work at restaurants and treat him the way he doesn't want to be treated, he'll put out quotes like these. Sometimes he whispers, leaning across the table, if someone is an a-hole like a waiter at a restaurant, I think I could just buy this place and fire that guy. Which is just incredible, isn't it? That is demonic. That is maniacal to have that thought even cross one's mind because a member of the wait staff who I would guarantee folks like Tepper take advantage of and treat horribly would have the gall to even admit that they would purchase an establishment Justifier that person. Remarkable. Back to the young Stroud Tepper story. Stephen Holder of ESPN would write on Twitter above a Frank Reich video. This is painful to watch because it is not the first time I've heard him say this. It's an open secret in the league that the owner heavily influenced the quarterback choice, which is never ideal. Before we jump ahead further with this really interesting story, 
If you can, please do become a channel member at youtube.com slash TYT sports and or go to tyt.com slash join. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. David Tepper has had a tumultuous tenure as owner of the Carolina Panthers, and he took over, if you do remember, when the late owner, Jerry Richardson, sold the franchise in 2018. That also rings an alarm for me and rings a bell. There was a group that was trying to buy the Panthers, and it was led by Stephen Curry, hometown kid, and Diddy. Yeah, Diddy. Anywho, here's what I would say. If the billionaire class wants to stay out of the headlines, just don't do this. But it also goes to show the lack of understanding that they do slash don't have. Because he could have easily seen this and just kept on driving. But because of his wealth, he feels that he demands respect everywhere he goes, even though with his own decision-making, he probably passed up on a future Hall of Famer and C.J. Stroud unless we see him take not even a step back, like 20 steps back, gave the Bears a potential, I say this as a Bears fan, they'll always find a way to screw it up as long as the McCaskies are in charge, but a potential great quarterback and went with a guy who in a small sample size does not look like he could be one of those two quarterbacks that I just listed, C.J. Stroud or Kayla Williams. And with him leading the charge, not only have they fired coaches left and right over and over and over again, apparently this is a business practice of his because he is also owner of Charlotte FC. In three years, they have had three managers. There is something about David Tepper and sports that just don't mix. And yet here he is on his high horse, going into a restaurant, asking about the sign. All reports are indicating that it was somewhat of a friendly banter, but he also saw the host have an Eagles hat on and took it off for him. I am begging many people in positions of power. You don't have to do this. You don't have to get out of your fancy automobiles, go in and demand answers on dissent. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a guy who is telling you about a fragile, egotistical business owner named David Dutton. Somebody called me Trump, uh, a female version of Trump, a little softer around the edges, and I take that as the highest compliment. I have immense respect for President Trump, what he gave up for this country, what he continues to do for this country. Let's talk about the self-proclaimed female Trump. Everything was, she's a fascist, <laughs> she's a, a racist, she's this, she's that, and I thought, wow, this is somebody who I can relate to because they're doing the same thing about me, and it, it makes me yes. realize that if they're not calling you all of these slurs, if they're not attacking you, then you're probably not truly representing the people of your country. I, I'm a true believer that if MLK, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. were alive today, if JFK were alive today, if our founding fathers were alive today, they would be America first Republicans. I really believe that. Carrie Lake spitting on the legacy of MLK and his politics alongside Russian propagandist Tulsi Gabbard is quite a sight to behold, especially now that Lake is running for the soon-to-be-open Senate seat in Arizona and Trump is throwing his support behind her once again. I know you're all helping Carrie, and she's a spectacular woman, and she's going to do a great job. She's going to do a great job, and she's worked hard. She gave up a lot. I did too, by the way, but she gave up. 
she gave up a lot and uh, she was the number one person for years i guess 21 years or something and they want 27 you shouldn't say that it's just 21 sounds better. As we covered previously, the insurrectionist ex-pres hosted Lake at Mar-a-Lago with a cast of deplorables like Laura Loomer present to raise more money for Lake to spew garbage like this on the campaign trail. We are going to put on the armor of God. Yeah. And maybe strap on a Glock on the side of us just in case. You can put one here and one in the back or one in the front, whatever you guys decide. Because we're not going to be the victims of crime. We're not going to have our Second Amendment taken away. We're certainly not going to have our First Amendment taken away by these tyrants. The reaction from the crowd says it all here, as Lake is taking a page out of Trump's playbook and appealing to the violent urges of the Republican base, though she would cop out and backtrack on what she said later. I said, you know, this is going to be a rough and tumble year. We see that there's no, there's crime on the streets. We see what's happening in New York. What being punched in the face knocked over, stabbed in the streets. We're seeing it everywhere. And I said, this is going to be a year you want to strap on your block. Yeah. Oh, man. The New, York Times, the New York, York, York Times is losing their mind. Because you said the that? The Washington Post, it's like, we have actually a second enemy out there. Yeah. And we are not afraid of guns. We know that our guns are going to protect us. We're not going to be the victim of guns. Speaking to Arizona voters, Twitter user Shannon Watts recorded Lake doubling down on her appeal to violence, cowardly saying that she was just talking about citizens protecting themselves from crimes committed by immigrants and migrants from the southern border. But we know who Carrie Lake is and what she really means when this rhetoric is her campaign platform. We're a Second Amendment sanctuary state. We're an open carry state, and they can go straight to hell if they think they're going to try to take away our Second Amendment rights here in Arizona. We will not comply with any of their rulings that try to take away our Second Amendment rights. It's pretty simple. And we're not going to sit back and, and take any more stolen elections. And so when I'm governor, we're going to fix it, and we're going to make sure we have honest elections. So people who think they're going to try to steal and the mules who are going to try to move ballots, we're watching you, you are being watched, and there will be hell to pay. You know, when these Chilean gangs that have broken into our country and are now breaking into homes, when they break into your home and rob you blind, they don't ask if you voted for Joe Biden. They don't ask if you're a Democrat. They don't, you know, they don't care what your political affiliation is. And we need to get serious about what's happening. We're losing our country. We're losing our safety. And when we lose that most basic feeling of being safe in our own communities, neighborhoods, and for goodness sakes, in our own homes, we're in deep trouble. God is on our side. We are truly fighting pure evil right now. It is evil what we're dealing with in this world. It's coming from the left. It's coming from their spokespeople in the media. We all know it. This dangerous cocktail of God, guns, election denial, bigotry, and fear has led to violent outcomes in the past and could easily lead to much of the same in the future as Mehdi Hassan will eloquently point out. Language has consequences. Words matter. When Carrie Lake talks about strapping on glocks, when Tom Cotton talks about taking action into your own hands, People act on this stuff. When Donald Trump says, fight like hell, people go to the Capitol and fight like hell. Republicans say this stuff, and then there are consequences. Carrie Lake knows what she's doing. Tom Cotton, Harvard grad, knows what he's doing. And the consequences are very clear. This is not just fun and games. When Mitt Romney goes on the record and says, there were members in the House who wanted to vote, GOP members who wanted to vote to impeach Donald Trump, but they were scared for their families. They were worried about the safety of their wife and kids, a lot of these Republican men. That is a deliberate tactic by Trump, the mafia boss, and the little mafia bosses below him to enforce order both within the party and now within the country. This is the crux of the issue. These Republicans know exactly what they're doing by adopting and co-signing increasingly violent rhetoric. It has nothing to do with free speech or the First Amendment. It has everything to do with the potential consequences of said rhetoric. But again, violence, or at the very least the threat of violence, is the end goal of the gun-worshipping Republican voter base. The people, my people are so smart. And you know what else they say about my people? The polls. They say, I have the most loyal people. Did you ever see that? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. <laughs> no, they say, Trump, we love you too, man.